Guys, we're continuing with the example we did in the previous video, except I'm now going to be finding all these values at a point B, which is not on an equipotential line. Okay, so the process is very, very similar. Um, so we'd come and we'd draw in all our EP values, and we'd find the head at B. Now B is not on an EP, but what we're going to do is we're just going to average the equipotential values of head either side. Okay, and that will give us B because B is roughly between these two. Um, equipotential lines. So the head at B would equal, so it's 1.2 and 0.84. So 1.2 plus 0 0.84, we're going to take the average of that and we get 1.02 meters. Okay, so that's the head value. If I wanted to do it that I, so that I wouldn't have to draw all these EPs in, I could have done it like we did the previous one. So the head at B would come to the head over here, so that's 0 0.5 plus, because we need to go from a point of high, low head to high head, we're going to add on changes in H. Now how many change in H's do we have? We have one and a half, okay, roughly one and a half, so it's going to be plus 1.5 change in H. Okay, from the previous video, we know change in H was, I think, 0.36, let me just double check it. Uh, change in H was 0.36 okay so this would be uh, 0.5 plus 1.5 times 0.36 would give us 1.02 meters um, we could have also done it going the other direction so uh, the head from this point here going this way so the head there is we know 3 meters right we know the head at point B is 3 meters so 3 now we're going to be subtracting because we're going from the point of high head to low head. So how many drops do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, five and a half drops to B. So times 5.5 outside of the change in H, which is 0 0.36. Okay, let's just double check. We get back to that answer of 1.02. Yep, we get 1.02 meters. Okay, so either one of these three methods will suffice. Okay, now we can find the pore water pressure. We first, so we know from the previous video that the pore water pressure was equal to H minus Z outside of gamma W. We know H, we just need to find Z. So you guys will remember where we find Z is we just scale it off our diagram. So from the datum, the point B is around two centimeters below the surface which in our scale is one meter. And once again, because we're going below our datum, it's negative, so Z will be negative two meters, okay? And then we can plug in all our values. H is 1.02 minus minus two, outside of 9.81. And we can get a pore water pressure of 1.02 plus two times 9.81, which will be 29.6 kPa. Okay. The last thing we're going to do is find the hydraulic gradient at B. Okay. We know that hydraulic gradient I is equal to dH on dL. So the change in head over the change in length. Okay. So, and this is defined from our datum, right? So from our datum, the change in the total change in head from our datum. So if we were to come down to this point, so from the datum. The change in head would be 0 0.5. So we first find the head at B. We know the head of B is 1.02 meters. So dH equals 1.02 minus the head at the datum, which is 0 0.5 meters. Okay. So the change in head is 1.02 minus 0 0.5, which is 0 0.52 meters. And the change in length, okay, we, we've pretty much just worked it out before, but we would just scale it off our diagram. I mean, it's going to go along a flow tube or like a flow tube, so it's, it's roughly coming vertically down. So it's two centimeters, which we know from our scale is two meters. So DL is two meters. And then we can find a hydraulic gradient, which is DH and DL. So it would be 0 0.52 on two. So 0.52 divided by 2, our hydraulic gradient is 0 0.26. So the change in head divided by the change in length. Okay, hope that helps guys. Um, in the next video, we're going to be looking 
at how this situation puts a um, like a line load, like a, a linear load on this wall um, or on on, a, on, a permeable, on an impermeable surface somewhere. So we're going to be looking how a flow net, how we're going to be using a flow net to calculate the uh, linear load, the linear loads, the linear force at which the pore water pressure puts on a surface. Hope that helps.